G'day there. You're watching the Aussie BIM Guru. My name is Gavin and today I'm aiming to teach you about Dynamo as a beginner. Now I've actually got a lot of tutorials on my channel but they're typically aimed towards more advanced and experienced users. But I know there's still a lot of you out there that are just learning how to use Dynamo right now. So my goal today is to show you some basic tips and tricks in a basic Dynamo script. And the focus here is going to be on data, not on geometry, because this is how most of uh, the good users in Dynamo really take advantage of the tool. So I look forward to jumping in. Um, without further ado, let's get started. Um, you're going to be needing, in this case, ideally Revit 2020 or higher, and also the built-in version of Dynamo that comes with it. We are going to use one custom package today, but I'll show you how you can download and install it. And otherwise, we're going to build a nice, simple script that will deal with changing the case of text notes in a drawing. But I'm going to teach you about some basic principles such as collecting elements and also filtering data sets in order to create quite a useful tool that will deploy as a Dynamo player compatible script at the end. Now, if none of what I said just made sense to you, don't worry. We're going to start with the assumption you know nothing about Dynamo and across about 10 minutes or so, we'll show you how to build a handy little script. So I look forward to teaching you and getting you started with using Dynamo. So let's jump in. Okay, so here we are um, at the beginning of your journey with Dynamo. In this case, I'm using the Autodesk Basic Sample Project, which is a nice, simple little project you can use to test scripts and concepts. Now I'm just gonna undo a few steps because I already ran this script a few times, but we're gonna build a script from scratch. So I'm using Revit 2020, which has Dynamo pre-built into it, and its version will depend on the build of Revit that you're using. So at the moment, I'm running Dynamo 2.3.0 because I'm using Revit 2020.2.3. Uh, 20, so I'm just gonna boot up Dynamo under the Manage tab to get started. And this is gonna open Dynamo over the top of Revit, but it's essentially talking to Revit on the side. So Revit's in the background, and I'm just gonna make a little bit of space so we can see, see a text note. Because the script that we're gonna use to teach you the fundamentals of Dynamo here is uh, using text notes because it's a great way to work with data but also to visually see what you're doing. So I'm going to make a new script in this case. So now that I'm making a new script, um, I should be able to focus in this case on the task at hand. And I'm just quickly going to open up a little reference that I have on the side so I can follow along with my own use case. Um, but in this case, it's a fairly simple script. So our goal here is to build a tool that allows us to change the case of text notes um, to upper or lower case and also to title case as well. Now I'm going to start by selecting one model element and I believe that that can be found under the browser in Revit uh, selection. And you can see a whole bunch of ways to collect what we call elements in Dynamo. So in this case, we're going to be collecting a model element, which is our text note. We can see at the moment we're running in what's called automatic mode, which means Dynamo is constantly updating in line with the model and vice versa. So I'm going to select and now I'm prompted to pick something in the model. I'm going to pick this and notice now we have an element and if I hover over here, I can see that I've got a text note with its element ID here. So what we can do now is actually obtain properties from this element. So if I go back to Revit and I go to elements, I can look for the category of element I'm dealing with, which is text note. And we can see a lot of things that we can do here. We can create new text notes, but we can also interrogate the property of existing text notes. And finally, we can set the text of a note. Now in this case, I'm just gonna check the text of this text note. So I've got two notes here and I can connect them just by clicking and clicking. And now these are connected. So essentially our data is flowing left to right. And now I can see that the contents of my text note is outdoor dining. Let's go pick another one. Maybe this one here. And now I can see that it's rainwater collection tanks. So you can see that we're drawing on some data from the model uh, quite quickly. Now, what if I pick something that's not a text note? Well, we'll run into some problems here. See, now I get a warning or an error that it says it was expecting a text note, but it got a wall. So you do need to be careful in Dynamo uh, when you're passing nodes. You may need to build your script to troubleshoot. Um, let's say we're gonna select multiple elements potentially. I'm gonna go back to selection in this case down in Revit selection. And I'm gonna select multiple elements instead because maybe we wanna select more text notes than one. Now I could potentially isolate category in a view before I select my notes just to get text notes. I can see I have three text notes now. 
in what we call a list or a collection of elements. But typically a user might want to just do a bulk selection and just say any, no any uh, text notes I can see here. But the problem is now we have a lot more than text notes. We actually have about 300 elements here. Now what we can do is turn this into a piece of text or what we call a string. So in this case, I'm just going to get the string from object node. I can also find it in the browser. In this case, I just right clicked in order to bring up a search and I can see that it's under string generate string from object. If I connect in this node here, we'll see that we get string versions of what's in here. And eventually I should be able to track down a text note. And there we go. We can see we're looking for something that is text note. Now we need to filter this list of elements down based on this property. So what I'm going to do is create a basic input under input basic and I'm just going to create a string and I'm going to type in text note because we want to match anything that equals this. After this we need to check if this equals something. So I'm going to go equals by searching. I can also find where it is again just by going here and I can find it under math operators. But we're going to say does this equal text note? And this list of 300 or so elements will be checked against this one. And we'll see that we'll get a list of falses and somewhere in there we'll get a true. So let's see at index 157 in my list, I can see I get a true. Well, let's go see what's at 157 here. And of course we have text note. Remember that this is a string, it's text. So it doesn't actually represent the original element. Our original elements are actually sitting back here. So we have lists of data that are parallel to each other now. I can see now that that's my original thing. So we really care mostly about what's here when we're filtering. So what I'm going to use to filter is a really useful node called filter by Boolean mask. I'm going to search for bool and it should be one of these, this one here. So under list modifier, we can use the filter by Boolean mask. And this expects a list of elements. And we call these booleans trues or falses. And we're going to use this list of trues or falses to mask our list. And depending on whether it's true or false, it'll go into a list of in for true or out for false. And now we can see we've limited just our text notes. Important to note that these are actually the elements, not their names. Sometimes people make a mistake of filtering the name and you end up with three strings instead, which we don't want. So now we can take these three text notes and get their text. So now we can see outdoor dining, deck and rainwater collection tanks. So now we have a list of things we can modify. Now let's manipulate them. So in this case, we're going to manipulate our string. And we're going to modify our strings case. Now there are two upper and two lower nodes, which just simply change the case of the data. Let's just connect those and let's use a watch node. So I'm going to search for watch and I'll see that if I use two lower, everything becomes lowercase or everything becomes uppercase. This just previews what's happening. But there's a better node we can use again, which is the change case node. In this case, this node is even more flexible in that we provided a string and we provided a condition. If it's true, it's uppercase. If it's false, it's lowercase. So I'm just going to search for bool for boolean to get a true false. And this is a primitive true false node. So you should be able to find it under, I think in this case, it probably is under basic inputs. Yep, basic input, boolean. And in this case, we'll say false to the upper condition. We'll just delete these. And now we should end up with a logic gate. So whilst this is false, we can see they're all lowercase and whilst it's true, they're all uppercase. Pretty cool, right? So now we have something that's a little bit more intelligent. But what if we also want to have the option to change everything to title case? Well, in this case, Dynamo doesn't have a node that does that. However, there's a custom package in Dynamo that does called Rhythm. Custom packages are used to extend the capabilities of Dynamo beyond what comes out of the box. So if I go up to packages, search for a package, and usually I go sort by name just to keep everything in order. Eventually, if you're connected to the internet, you should get a list. And I'm just gonna search for the Rhythm Package by John Pearson. This is a very popular package and very useful. 
you can click on this to see all the builds that have been created. And depending on the package manager, they may keep them date marked. So you can see here, for example, any version he released in 2020 is 2020.x.x. But in this case, he's made one in 2021 as well. And in this case, this package manager keeps this package relevant from Revit 2020, 2018 and beyond. So he's a really good package manager. But I've already installed this. So if you clicked on install, it would give you a few prompts about Python libraries and you essentially just say yes to everything. And once you're finished, it will install the package. And then you'll have a set of nodes down here that you can use instead. So in this case, let's search for title case. And I can see from the rhythm package, I have two title. I also have titleize as well, which is interesting, but I'm just gonna use two title. And now we can take this and turn it into title case. Now uppercase to title case keeps it uppercase, but lowercase to title case adds a capital letter to every word, uh, every word's first letter. So in this case, let's just keep it like this. But what if I wanna say that I want the option to do title as well? Well, now we're gonna introduce another logic gate. So I'm gonna use an if node in order to do that. I'll search for if, and I'll find the if conditional statement. I think this should be under control flow. Yep, it's under script, control flow, if. And in this case, we're gonna have two options. So I'm gonna add another Boolean. So I'm just gonna copy and paste. And now I'm just gonna, in this case, say, if it's true, then I do want it to be title case. So I'm gonna connect this. So I have a title case list here, but then I have a non-title case list here. And I'm gonna say, if true, then title case. Otherwise, not title case. So we've created another custom logic gateway here. You'll use a lot of logic gateways in Dynamo, um, but in this case, we can see now that again, sort of like the string upper node, now you can see that we have another control for our script. Now that we've got this, the last thing we need to do is go and set the value. So in this case, we'll go to Revit, Elements, and we'll go back to text note, and we'll go back and set our text. Now we're gonna need our original text note. So it's important to note that everything we've been doing is parallel to those elements that we filtered all the way back here. I'm gonna move these nodes down just to keep my script organized. And I'm gonna connect the result to the value. So I'll just connect the value. Now, as soon as I do that, our script is interacting with Revit. If I change this to false, notice that it's already updating this node. Or if I go upper, it's already interacting. So sometimes you wanna run scripts in automatic mode, sometimes you don't. Usually we run in manual mode, which means it doesn't run until you tell it to. So when I make a change, none of the data in Dynamo updates and none of the interactions with Revit occur. But if I run, that's when it happens. Usually we'll do this, it's a much safer way to run a script. The last thing we're gonna do here is package the script for Dynamo Player which is a lightweight interface that will allow you to package a script for a basic user. So in this case, I'm gonna right click this node and tell the script it's an input. I'll rename it to select elements to change because this is how it will read inside Dynamo Player. I'm then gonna to go to my first Boolean is input and I'm just gonna say uppercase. In this case, I'm gonna to go to my next Boolean. And I'm gonna call this title case. So these are three inputs. And then finally, I have my output, which in this case returns a null, unfortunately. I could always create a watch node and see my result here instead. And if we wanted to, we could specify this as an output and we could call this new node contents. Now none of this really makes an impact until we open this script in Dynamo Player. So I'm gonna save this script and I'll just save it to my desktop and I'll just call this demo script. I'm gonna close Dynamo and I'm gonna open Dynamo Player. And this is essentially a little toolbox for Dynamo. I'm gonna to open my desktop 
where I'm keeping my script. And now I can see my demo script. Now if I click on this box, I can change the inputs of my script. And now we can see what we've added in Dynamo before. We have our elements, uppercase, title case, and the contents. And now I can just do a selection. I can say, I want these to be uppercase, and I don't care if it's title. Play, and I can see my script is run, and I can see my output. Also, I still have them selected. I can just say title case, not upper, run. I can also do a more limited selection, maybe just this element. And now I'm just dealing with that particular element. So hopefully this has helped show you a few tricks in getting started with Dynamo. We've only really dealt with some basic elements, but you can imagine that the potential for Dynamo with elements like walls and rooms and ceilings is quite similar. You can take their data, manipulate it, and there's many more things you can do with Dynamo. But hopefully this has given you somewhere that you can get started. So there we go. Now you know a little bit more about Dynamo than you did hopefully 10 minutes ago. And from here, there's a lot of places you can extend your learning. For example, there's the Dynamo Primer, which is sort of like the Wikipedia for Dynamo. It contains a lot of uh, useful pages, which run through all the principles in a good order in which you can learn Dynamo. When you're a little bit more experienced, there's a forum where you can learn about Dynamo as well. But do be careful that you don't go there with no scripts prepared for help. People don't typically build things for you, they help you with real problems that you're already encountering. Beyond this, there are channels like mine, which have a lot of series and videos dedicated towards learning Dynamo and pushing it to its limits. And beyond that, I'm proud to announce that I will be releasing a course platform quite shortly um, at bimguru.education, which will have a, a full Dynamo course from start to finish, essentially which will teach you pretty much everything you need to know in order to get started with Dynamo. So feel free to visit the URL shown here and sign up for the platform so that when it's released, you'll be aware of it. It will be a paid platform, but I am trying to keep the pricing accessible uh, for people around the world where possible. Anyway, that's all for today. I look forward to seeing you in future videos. And if you're not already following and subscribing the channel, uh, feel free to do so. And I'll see you in future videos. Thanks, take care.